Flame Noble Knights in action. We're going to be checking out a bunch of different varieties in some dueling matchups. The first duel is over here up against a Mystic Mine deck. Looks like some type of like burn. Uh, Cauldron of the Old Man. Super Scumbag deck variant. Man, can we just make this card go away? <laughs> I really dislike this card. This is one of my... One of the cards I dislike the most right now in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because there's always some random new Mystic Mind variant that people are utilizing. But, you guys are going to see how he outplays this guy really hard. Because we're going to go ahead and use one of the newer cards for the Flame Noble Knights. The Olyphian Horn over here. It's more so for like Fire Warriors, but it kind of does work kind of. Uh, with the Noble Knights, obviously. But what you're able to do is go ahead and have that effect where you get to banish an equipped spell and then destroy one card in the field. And since the guy activated Field Barrier and the way he used it, he was able to go ahead and pop the card. And since Field Barrier is here, and you can see the deck can definitely OTK, plus this card can actually pop a card uh, mid uh, a quick effect with one of the other cards, which we'll get into in a second. But I really liked how he outputted the guy because Field Barrier makes it so neither player can activate a new uh, field spell card. So he actually outplayed his opponent because of the way he activated it and uh, he can't actually place uh, face up another copy of Mystic Mind, which I think is absolutely hilarious here. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the deck doesn't have too many negations. We'll also showcase it off against the new Sacred Beast. Plus, we're going to show it off against, um, there's, there's a matchup against a, another player playing uh, the Spirals, uh, Raid Raptors. Raid Raptors are actually getting a lot more popularity. Obviously, the new card coming out pretty dang soon, and everyone's hyped about it. So as far as the deck goes, like, how many negates can you get out of this? The the main thing is, like, three at most, and it requires a pretty decent hand, and I would not say it's super consistent. So if you're looking for a super negate-heavy deck, this probably won't be a deck for you. I don't even think it's going to be that great as of right now. You guys are seeing new massive draw power with the Fallen Paradise, and he's going to go ahead and uh, get rolling into the graveyard so you can activate that effect and search out another fire warrior monster or an equip spell so he's going to go ahead and summon the renaud over here to equip and go right into the flame guard rolling but he's going to go ahead and get a mini pot of avarice effect over here courtesy of magus so magus over here is a mini pot of avarice whenever it's sent to the graveyard shuffle three uh fire warriors and or noble arms cards that are banished or in your graveyard and you get to draw a card so now he's going to go ahead and equip the uh Flame Noble Knights to him. These can just be equipped for free, which is really good. It almost reminds me kind of like Insectors. It's just like, they're just going to just get, get an equip. But these cards just have their cards effects activated in the graveyard. And they basically boost up whatever you want. Because what you can do is if this card is graveyard, you can just target a warrior monster, you control it, and just equip it. They all get bonus effects. So you have ones where it can't be destroyed by battle, cannot be destroyed by card effects, and one of them also makes it so you can't be targeted. But in this case, we went ahead and made the Utopia to one-shot our opponent because he used that solemn judgment. So good play on that. Uh, next up, we're going to Go ahead and see it in a matchup versus the Raid Raptors. I'll try to explain some of the uh, synchros here. But yeah, once Y Strix got announced, this deck really needed that card for the longest time. It took uh, way too long. But you know what I like to see? I like to see Mystic Mind players lose. And if you do also like to see them lose, drop a like on this video. But anyways, uh, now moving on against the, the Ray Raptor deck variant here. We're going to go ahead and see the Vanguard Roland. So this card has the effect where uh, during the end phase, you get to send an equip spell from your deck to the graveyard, then add a warrior monster from your deck to your hand. And then uh, during the main phase, uh, if this card's in your graveyard, as a quick effect, you get to target a warrior monster you control and just equip it to it. And then, this is important, I have to pause it here. Flame Noble Knight Emperor Charles is the new boss monster. He's a level 9 synchro. And remember, you get to equip all these for free. And every single time, uh, well, what is it? Uh, it says, it, uh, except uh, during the damage step, if a monster on the field becomes equipped with an equip card, which obviously that's pretty easy to do, you get to... Uh, during the, where is it? Oh, I'm sorry, not except during the time. Even during the damage step, you can destroy a card on the field. Um, and then during the end phase, you get to equip an equip spell from your hand or graveyard to this card. And then on top of that, it has another effect that you can equip one Fire Warrior monster from your deck to this card and his equip spell, and it gains 500 attack. And then it, you can only use each effect of it once per turn. But you're going to be able to do it during your turn and your opponent's turn, so you're basically going to pop like two cards almost instantly because of the quick effect, because you'll most of the time go for Vanguard Roland because he's a tuner synchro, and then you can instantly equip him and then pop one card. And then with your God Gear Free, you can also pop a card. And then with the Trap card, you can pop a card. So that's kind of where you get the triple uh, stops in uh, for this deck. You can negate like three different times. 
But uh, again, it's not a negate heavy deck. Uh, it just has this idea where it tries to go for a boss monster. We have all of the uh, equips over here. So the monster cannot uh, be targeted, cannot be destroyed by battle, can't be destroyed by card effects. So that's the whole setup that you have. You have a boss monster. You don't have to equip it to him. Um, there is the destiny, which kind of does both in one. But uh, I, again, I don't know if I would consider this deck to be uh, so so meta. I mean, it, it, let's be honest, if the Spiral player went first, he probably would have had a pretty good time. But nonetheless, he's going second over here, so we're going to see the Augear. We're going to go ahead and see make Roland. And then we're going to go ahead and also see uh, some of the newer equips, like the Jewess over here. So this card has the effect where it makes it so while well, this card is equal to a monster, you get to target a fire warrior monster graveyard, add it back to your hand, then you destroy this card. And if it's sent to the graveyard because the equipped monster was sent to the graveyard, you get to special on a fire mo a warrior monster from your hand, which can of course be your gear free and you can combo from there. Uh, he went ahead and just said GG to this because this is a pop one, and this is a, a basically a negate one, and you can of course use that effect for that snatch deal. So he went ahead and just said, nah, I, I ain't happened, fam. Uh, but uh, we're gonna go and showcase off against, I don't know what era this guy was playing, but I think this guy is lost in time. At first, I was like, dude, black wings with this? I was like, what, what, what era is this? And I saw Bubonic Vermin. I was like, what the heck is this? And then I started scrolling through the deck, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? And then I was like, okay, what era is he from? Comment down below, because I have no idea. Again, is he from Duel Links, maybe? I don't know. I feel like every time I see all like the, the Drowning and other Mirror Forest cards, which aren't actually that bad, I'm like, okay, he got multiple copies of Dark Hall. I'm like, okay, it must be from Duel Links or something. I don't know. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and see the deck be able to OTK, which is, I mean, it, it, is it really that good against the Bubonic Vermin, Blackwing, Blue Eyes, Turbo? Probably. Uh, pretty easy matchup, but it's to show you guys that you can basically uh, pop one card and OTK through a, a board potentially uh, if you happen to have some extra negations. Plus, there are some cards like Caliburn or other Noble Knight cards maybe give you some extra pops, but for the most part, it's just show that you can definitely OTK. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys um, these are other duels uh, with um, other variants over here. So this first one is uh, up against the uh, newer Sacred Beast deck here. So we're gonna go ahead and see him go ahead and start sending some cards to Graver. We're gonna see the Noble Arms card. That's the one that goes ahead and lets him uh, be able to uh, target a Fire Warrior and then you get to uh, destroy this card and then uh, add it to your hand. So you can recycle some of the cards. Plus in this build over here, you're seeing the Noble Knight Vane over here and he's gonna go ahead and now make Charles and then he's gonna go ahead and activate the Hotty Clear and uh, basically just again make a boss monster with Charles. You can't be uh, targeted, cannot be destroyed by card effects. And then this one technically also has the other effect where it can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects. So again, all into one boss monster, which means if it's getting kaiju, you're going to be very sad. Uh, and then on top of this, uh, with the Arfi Duter, you're going to be able to go ahead and pop your opponent's back row if the case needs to be, uh, you know, popped. Uh, the deck is actually okay, um, but I don't think it has enough negates to make it meta at the end of the day. There's a lot better ways to use a soul, like Dark Warrior, um, any danger variant is probably going to be more successful, but I want to give you guys some extra uh, replays uh, courtesy of uh, Magus over here. So he's shown off a lot of different... Um, uh, matchups here. So this guy's playing author guys very stall heavy deck So instantly a warning is activated. I felt like that was activated a little bit too early here uh, Just off of that one card summon I feel like you should have waited for him to go ahead and make one of like the synchros at least the first one But nonetheless, I mean the card can be used as an equip from the grave anyways um, So a stolfo is uh, coming out over here. This is one where it makes it so um you banish a fire warrior monster from your hand or graveyard to special on this card. So it's another combo extender for the most part. And then also becomes the same level as the banished monster. So it lets you synchro a little bit easier and does let you go ahead and banish a card. And then um, also you can, uh, where is it? You can banish this card from graveyard and summon this banished card uh, during your second standby phase after activation. Usually the game's over at that point, uh, especially against most uh, meta Yu-Gi-Oh games. But nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and get that pot of Avarice effect. We're going to see their protocol activated. I'm just going to go ahead and stop it. But we got double monsters coming out of all the rest play. And then a summon limit happening over here. And this deck, it doesn't need a special summon a lot of times uh, per turn. Uh, but it does need a summon a, a few times. Once this is activated, it can kind of hinder your plays. Uh, because you need to go into like basically double synchro plays most of the time, but he's gonna go ahead and now attack getting that direct attack and getting rid of one of his opponent's cards and uh, this card has that Effect over there where it uh, cannot be destroyed by battle from Magus 
That's good stuff. And then we've also got the Queen of Noble Arms over here. And then we're gonna go ahead and get out uh, Astolfo as well as Gearfried. Gearfried, excellent, excellent card because he's gonna go ahead and finally be able to stop some of those Altergeist shenanigans going on. And then on top of that, uh, we've got that effect where we can go ahead and start taking some of our opponent's monsters, which obviously is quite good. So he's gonna go ahead and take some damage, and then he's gonna go ahead and be able to proc the effect. He's wanting the card in the graveyard for wondering why he went to go ahead and attacks. Uh, so now we have a gear freed with multiple uh, potential negations, uh, and then he's gonna go ahead and trigger because um, he's probably not gonna be destroying things by battle because uh, it's just altergeist, right? But uh, now that you guys have seen the deck in action, let me go and give you guys a deck profile for this build of the new 2020 Flame Noble Knights. So here's what we got. So we got two copies of Gear Freed, two copies of Drone, we got three copies of Ogier, we got two copies of Hamagus, three copies of Oliver, and then we've got one copy of Morgan, three copies of Ash Blossom, one copy of uh, the Guinevere, two copies of Roland, three copies of Renan, one copy of the Astolfo, uh, was it Astolf? Yeah, Astolfo. And then uh, one copy of Reinforcement Army, three copies of Heritage, one copy of Glory of the Noble Knights, because that is a awesome quick effect because you lets you uh, target a Noble Knight monster you control and equip it with an equip spell from your deck that you can equip to. I wish it was also an appropriate equip target because then you can start equipping the other uh, Flame Noble Knights. That would be awesome, but that's just how it works. And then we got two copies of Arms of Destiny, uh, two copies of Excalibur, and then we have three two copies of Durendal, three copies of the uh, Noble uh, Arms uh, Joyos, and then two copies of the Olyphian Horn, which is like the other stun card. But also has the fact where you get to destroy a Roland monster and especially up to three fire warrior monsters uh, from your deck. Um, unfortunately, it does require them to equal nine. Otherwise, it'd be so much easier. The goal with this is supposed to be to go ahead and allow you to go right into the synchro because um, it does negate their effects. But if it didn't negate the effects, it'd be way too OP to so summon three fire warriors. Uh, but nonetheless, you could still go for certain things. And then um, it has another negative effect where um, you can't supposed some monsters until the end of your next turn except for warrior monsters otherwise you'd be like all right surprise trishula time right uh but for the extra deck this is what we've got uh, so this is the boss monster the flame uh noble knight emperor charles and then we've got two copies of the flame noble knight vanguard roland and then we've got uh, utopia lightning We've got Sacred Normal Knight, uh, King Artorgas. I think a lot of these don't need to be in here uh, for the most part. Utopia definitely is, is okay. I think you can get away with Extravagance and just max out three copies of each. Since this card, you only really need to go for it once. Then Charles, I'd say only once too. The game's usually going to be over. Um, and then we've got uh, Utopia, uh, double. And then we've got uh, Boil Load. We've got uh, Appaloosa, three copies of a soul. So I'd say three copies of a soul. I'd say three, 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 and then just extract against the deck. Uh, and you can maybe add a little bit more consistency, add some impermanences to have some more negates. I don't think the deck has what it takes right now to be a tier zero deck, but you guys can let me know about your thoughts down below on the build. Once again, shout out to my boy Magus for hooking me up with the replays. If you guys want to send in me other replays, feel free to go ahead and do so. We need some good Murphy uh, gameplay, but I don't think that that's possible right now. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, drop a like on it. And if you're new here, make sure you guys hit subscribe, turn on the bell so you don't miss out on more Yu-Gi-Oh! gameplays. But thanks for tuning in, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good one, and I'm out. Peace.